Hey everyone, Brian here. Today I'll be talking to you guys about why I bought a vintage Lever Espresso machine in 2021. Be going over what the machine is, why I like it so much, what the reasons are for buying a machine like this, and then we'll be making a drink to showcase how to use it, and then that's just the entire video. So super fun. I love Lever Espresso machines and I hope you do too. This here is a post-millennium La Pavoni Euro Piccola. It's got the 51 millimeter portafilter basket, the updated sight glass cover design, and then also it has a, well, single power switch on the side. So it's not super vintage, as some true leverheads may point out, but it's the oldest espresso machine I own. Uh, what I've done to it so far is I have swapped to a 51 millimeter bottomless portafilter here. I got this from Italy. I think this was about 50 or $60. And then I swapped to an IMS Precision basket. Uh, this here is a 14 gram basket. Uh, it's just a lot you know, easier and nicer to use especially considering the Euro Piccola here has uh, an abysmal amount of drip tray space. Uh, there really isn't a lot of room here to fit a scale or anything if you use the stock portafilter. Uh, however, with the bottomless, it's kind of a quality of life upgrade. The other thing too is when I purchased the Lapaoni from a guy locally, the sight glass cover was cracked, so I went out and bought a new one and I replaced it, uh, but otherwise, there hasn't been, uh, have been any other adjustments to the actual machine itself. The other quality of life upgrade I've purchased is a 51 millimeter dosing funnel, just to make sure that I can grind directly to the pour filter and it keeps things clean. So that fits on the pour filter like so. Overall, this is an incredibly enjoyable uh, machine to use. Uh, other things to note are La Pavonis have removable drip trays. So uh, this is just the stock plastic drip tray. It's got two pieces that you can remove and you can put right there. Uh, but I've actually elected to keep my machine incredibly Spartan. Uh, I don't even have the temperature strip installed right now. I'll be putting that on probably in the future, but I don't have the uh, lever pressure kit that you can stick over here. I also don't even have the steam boiler pressure gauge on here. And for me, the reason why I've done that is because this is an incredibly different espresso making experience than my main machine, which is the Decent Espresso DE1. In fact, the only variable I measure is, well, my weights. I just, with the bottom spur filter down here, I can now fit a scale and a cup and I can actually measure my dosage, but I don't even really it's not even that crazy to me. I'm only pulling one to twos usually, maybe one to 2.5s if I forget to remove the entire scale and cup and put another cup because as you'll find out in the demonstration of using this machine, uh, espresso and residual pressure and liquid will just come out of here and uh, you do definitely want to have another cup of some sort to catch all of that. Since we're talking about quality of life, I have also swapped to a single hole steam wand. Uh, this here, just because my DE1 also has a single hole, I just prefer single hole steaming. It's for me the easiest, but if I were to make a complaint, on this is that there isn't a lot of space to move your pitcher around to get really nice incorporation because this this steam wand is just sort of fixed with the exception of being able to move up here, but I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, and the other kind of issue with this setup is that as you'll find out, everything that you see metal here will get really, really, really hot as you turn the machine on because this is essentially a steam boiler strapped to a lever as assembly. Now, if you've been following me at all, you'll realize that I have a decent espresso DE1. That's a machine that is incredibly consistent. It's got full data, everything. It is essentially a perfect method of making espresso. It's, it's, it's awesome. And the thing is, is that this here is literally the complete opposite. Uh, if, in order for you to actually repeat shots, to get the exact same everything, you have to be a master of this machine. 
And the funny contrast between both machines is that your DE1 is something like a Tesla electric vehicle, whereas this here is that really nice, fun manual sports car that you take out on the weekends to enjoy. And that is why I picked this guy up, because this offers me the entire opposite spectrum of making espresso, where you are the pump. You literally get to make the coffee, and it is one of the most fun and enjoyable experiences that I've ever had of making coffee and espresso. I just love the lever experience. Now, the other thing to note is that it turns out, and this is also a big reason why I bought the machine, is that most of the profiles that are good and most of the profiles that everyone runs on the Decent DE1, uh, they're all lever profiles, mainly things like the Londinium profile, where we have a fast flow at the beginning from lifting the lever up, introducing water into the puck. Then there is a slight pre-infusion stage where you br briefly pull down on the lever to gradually introduce water into the puck and pre-infuse. Then there is a ramp up in flow and pressure, and you'll see your pressure curve go up like this, and you'll get a nice decline at the end as the puck starts to degrade and the lever becomes easier to pull down. So you'll realize that we, at least a lot of us on the DE1, are using lever shots. And for me, I knew that that was what I wanted to do with my own two hands. The DE1 allowed me to learn about what was happening with pressure and flow, but I wanted to do it myself. And that, to me, has been an incredibly enjoyable experience. It also turns out lever profiles are awesome because they're relatively forgiving because you're really manipulating the flow and you're also able to extract a lot of clarity, at least, well, it depends on what coffee you're running, uh, out of it. But for me, the biggest thing is the body and texture and mouthfeel that you just simply cannot get out of any other profile. Lever profiles are the best for body, in my opinion. And to execute those profiles with one of these is just super, super fun. So definitely would recommend you pick one of these guys up if you wanted a contrasting machine to something like a more, you know, quote unquote, perfect uh, espresso making experience like the Decent. Another thing to note, because I've been talking about, yeah, it's super fun to make the coffee and all of that, is that, well, we're using a 14 gram basket here and 14 grams means you can make a lot more coffee each day and have a fun experience every single time when you do so. Okay, now that I've talked about why I like the machine, what the machine is, and all of that good stuff, let's make a drink. I'll show you guys how to turn it on, how to fill up the water, and all of that. We'll be making a drink, and it should be super fun. Okay, so I've gotten some water, and what you will want to do is over here, you just want to unscrew the cap here. Uh, the stock cap is uh, plastic or some form of like rubber plastic material. I do want to replace this with wood one day to match. I kind of want to do all the whole the whole wood kit if possible, but I don't know if I can find a matching piece of wood for this port filter. I've moved the machine here, so hopefully you can see this sight glass. As I add water into the machine, you should see the water in the sight glass increase. So, this is also a fairly small boiler, so our water should heat up really, really quickly. All right, and as you can see, the water level here is, well, basically full just from uh, this guy. This is the Eddie pitcher, this is about 12. 13-ish ounces of water that I poured in. Uh, what you'll want to do is, well, make sure you have your entire uh, reservoir filled up because once this guy's on and you turn the machine on, you, you that's kind of it. You need to let the machine cool down before you can add any water in. Here, uh, like I mentioned, this is a post, this is a post-millennium machine. So uh, there is a single power switch on here. This will be green. When it turns off, that means your boiler t is up to temp. So we'll flip this guy on. And uh, now, 
we'll, we'll just wait. And as you notice, <laughs> you can see that I'm sliding this machine around. It's, it's incredibly small. So you'll just want to be a little bit careful when you're, well, pulling your espresso to not move the machine, not disturb it so much because when you're pulling up on this, it is kind of hard to keep the machine on the table or on your cart or whatever. So what I recommend and what you'll see a lot of guys do is you'll keep your hand on top of the boiler cap here and then you can pull up on the lever. Uh, but we'll let this guy heat up and I'll go get some cups and I'll be back. I'm not sure if you can hear this out of my little small mic here, but as the machine is heating up, it's, you kind of hear this um, rumbling noise. <clears throat> and what will end up happening is, uh, here, I'm gonna try to move the machine here. It's, it's a bit hot. Is uh, what you'll see here is that there's this valve here. I think it's a little bit different on pre-mill versus post-mill. Uh, there's this mushroom valve that will open and close as the water gets boiled. While this is boiling, the slight differences between, or the big differences at least, between the post-millennium, so ma manufactured after 2000 versus pre-millennium La Pavonis, is that the main, main difference is that you're running a 51 millimeter portafilter on the post mill versus the 49 millimeter. I believe this valve is a little bit different, the steam regulation valve. And then the other big difference that you'll definitely notice is that the power switches on the post millennium models, there's a single switch, just an on off. Whereas on pre mill models, there are usually two switches. One is a low power mode and one is a high power mode. And when you steam on those uh, pre-mill models, you'll want to have the high power mode turned on to get the maximum steaming power. But on this guy, it's just one switch and um, 51 millimeter portafilter. Also, I guess the sight glasses are a little bit different. This has an actual cover on here. Whereas on the uh, pre-mills, there's like a metal piece that goes in, but uh, otherwise, this is a fairly Spartan machine, fairly straightforward, uh, really easy to repair. And uh, the, this water is now really, really heating up now. I can hear it boiling. I can also start feeling the temperature. So what will happen is this is still, this is getting warm. This here is, is really hot already, the back part of the machine. And then the base, usually this front part is fairly, fairly cool but it's the back here by the boiler that's gonna get really, really hot. And uh, to kind of expedite the process, if I had a temperature strip on here I could show you, but we'll maybe do this later on, is um, you do want to flush a little bit of hot water through here to make sure that this is like actually hot, hot. Uh, you'll also find out that there's some tricks and techniques of just gradually introducing a little bit of water into the group head to really make sure it's heated up. Uh, but I just like to flush a little bit of water through here to really make sure the group head is up to temp. And then that's when I'm finding out I'm getting really good, nice shots out of this guy. Okay, so it seems like our water is getting up to temperature. The green light, I've turned it over to show you, but the green light back here is, is probably gonna turn off at some point. I'm gonna try to see if I can show you the steam that will come out of here as the boiler gets up to temperature. The other thing to note is while your machine is just on in general, the lights down here for your power button are kind of just gonna start flickering off and on in order for your machine to maintain temperature. So at least on my machine, uh, this green light here will just turn off then it'll turn on when the boiler gets up to temp and so on and so forth, uh, just to make sure that this is always ready to go. Uh, but with the full amount of water, you should be able to pull uh, a lot of shots actually. I'm finding that I can pull probably around eight to 10 shots with a full tank uh, because the dosage is so small. I'm not really using that much water uh, for the machine, but you do want to be careful if you're doing steaming, you're doing all that stuff. Uh, you really want to make sure the machine is off and cooled off, the water isn't boiling at all, the pressure is all gone before you fill up the water. So this is kind of a turn it on, serve your coffee, then turn the machine off it definitely doesn't have a lot of those quality of life upgrades that you find even in something like a single boiler entry level machine. Okay, 
So the, the green light down here has turned off, but I'm trying to show you guys the profile of the machine since you may not have seen it. Uh, but the green light down here has turned off, which means that our boiler is up to temperature. Now I'm being, trying to be a little bit careful. So the machine, you can definitely slide it around. This back here is incredibly hot. Don't touch any of this. You're gonna have a bad time. Uh, our group head is, is now fairly, fairly warm, fairly hot. Um, I'm just going to flush some water through it just to make sure, make sure that it's up to temp. Let me remove the scale here. Right there, my side of my hand just briefly touched this part and it really, really burns. So uh, let me show you kind of real quick how this works. I'll flush some water through here to heat up the group head just to make sure, and then also show you guys how this works. Okay, so I'm keeping this all, I'm keeping kind of my body weight down here so the machine doesn't move. Uh, and we're also kind of filming out of this awkward angle. But basically, as you lift up, you'll feel a little bit of resistance. And when there's kind of a, a notch here that you'll definitely feel when you lift past that point, you're gonna be introducing water. And for those of you who don't know, lever machines, when you introduce any sort of water, when there isn't any puck in it, the flow rate is really, really high. So this should basically spit out a ton of water. Like that. <laughs> now this cup is basically filled with hot water. But uh, that point that you can feel the water right before the water being introduced, there is resistance there. And that's how you'll know what, that you're actually introducing water to your puck. Today we'll be using Killer Coffee's Single Origin Africa. The notes on here are floral, black tea, and clean. This is an Ethiopian. Uh, and I am just going to be doing 14 grams and we'll be running it through the Cafetec Monolith Flat with the 75 mil high uniformity uh, SSP red burrs. Okay. All right, 13.9, 14, let's go. All right, do a quick RDT. And then what I'll do is I'll take the portafilter from the La Pavoni back here, I'm trying to do all this awkwardly, and then we'll move the machine back in place of the grinder. I'll show you all of this. So this is why I like to use this dosing funnel. So the dosing funnel sits on top here like so. This is not magnetic, but uh, it does a good job. We'll put our beans into the grinder. Then if I can do this properly, I'll show you guys here, this will take a forever, so I'll probably cut it, it is just grind. You can uh, grind directly in here. Uh, if I did adjust the portafilter hooks, I would be able to grind directly in, but considering this is a tiny portafilter, I don't do that. All right. And uh, because I'm on a glass table here, I'm not going to do my prep and tamp on here, but we'll switch over to the machine. We are now back to the machine. Everything is really, really hot. The entire thing is basically don't want to touch it, but we have prepped our puck. So it is nice and flat. It, the, the prep did look okay. Uh, to, so to lock in your pore filter with this guy, you want to go in straight like so, and then I like to just hold everything. The machine is really small again, then lock in like so. Then because we're running a bottomless port filter, can fit a scale. And then I'll be using one of my friends, Nick's cups. These are really awesome handmade ceramic cups. And because we're using the bottomless, we can actually fit this guy. This is a Cortado cup. So what I like to do is I like to do a 10 second static pre-infusion. Just lift the lever up, leave it for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to start putting a little bit of pressure down on the lever. And then we'll put a lot of pressure on the lever to build the build our pressure curve. And then because the puck is degrading at the end, our pressure should gradually decrease and it should get easier to, well, push down the lever. So our pressure curve should look something like this with a decline and our flow chart because 
this is a lever machine should be a really fast flow at the beginning, then into nothing or a really s small amount of liquid for pre-infusion. And then when we press, when we're pushing down the lever, we're, in we're increasing that flow rate. And then uh, it'll kind of be like this of some sort. So it should look exactly like a Londinium style shot and it should taste really, really good. Before you actually do pull the shot, I almost forgot, is you'll want to bleed off external water from your uh, boiler, or there's some residual water in the system. So you'll just want to open the steam valve. And uh, now we see there is a little bit of water inside of this pitcher. But otherwise, we're good to go. I'm going to tear out everything and start timing. So lifting up the lever, introducing the water. I'm just going to do this for 10 seconds. Now I'm not doing anything. Okay, now I'm going to start pu pulling down on the lever. And we can see, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there are pre-infusion drops. Now I'm gonna really push down. We feel the resistance of the puck. Now I'm lessening the amount of strength I'm pushing down to get that pressure decline. And I'm going to let go, and I'm just going to replace this, if possible, with my cup. So our timing was a little bit off, but what is this here? This was 45 uh, or 40 ish seconds. Took me a little, a little bit of time to remove the cup uh, with 29 grams out. And uh, I'll do a close up with my phone so I can show you guys that there's actually crema and this actually looks like a good shot. So, as you can see there, our timing was a little bit off at 40 ish seconds, but we got 29.3 out, so a little bit longer than a uh, one to two, because we did usually 14 to 28. But as you can see, there's definitely crema. And uh, this is looking like a really tasty shot, and I'm going to try it. Yep, that's good, so I'm getting a lot of floral notes at the beginning. Then it goes into kind of like a black tea note in the middle. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get really good coffee if you do things right. And the thing is, is that, well, that coffee is gonna change flavor depending on what type of profiling you use or pressure profiling we're using here. For fun, let's kind of make this guy into a cortado. So I have a little bit of milk here and I'm going to try to steam uh, trying to get, gonna try to do this with this awkward camera angle and we're gonna see if we can uh, get some latte art and we got to be really careful about uh, Not touching any of the metal pieces too because all the metal pieces are really really hot But let's see if I can steam some milk this way Okay, I'm gonna use my right hand Okay, I've introduced there I'm getting a nice whirl I'm opening up the steam valve to, to let it get the maximum power. The whirl looks good. The bubbles are incorporating. The steaming performance actually is fairly decent on this guy. That's not a pun, but uh, the, the steaming is actually much, much faster than my DE1, in fact. However, the steam quality is uh, definitely not on par as the, as the DE one. And uh, anyway, that is looking like pretty okay cappuccino style foam. It is easier, I feel like, just due to the steam on placement to, uh, to get cappuccino style foam. But anyway, the other gripe that I have too is you just need to have a damp towel of some sort because the steam wand here gets really, really hot and kind of your milk will, will get caked on. But um, I'll use the phone camera again, so we'll be able to see. And over here, you know, that's a little bit more air than I usually inject, especially for this sharp spout pitcher. Um, but uh, honestly, uh, if once I knock out the uh, big bubbles, it should be completely fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna see if I can pour something for the camera. 
Okay, I've returned from uh, not slamming things on this poor glass table, but as you can see, the texture looks good. I've knocked out most of the uh, large bubbles in here, and I'm gonna see if I can pour something into this Cortado cup, because it's nicely handmade, but I should be able to get something. Okay. Oop. Or not. My latte art has not been on point recently. Okay, here's this uh, funnily, here's this uh, deformed heart, as you can see here. Didn't get the best for, I think uh, it's a little bit hard to film in this cramped space here, but yeah, you know, the texture of the milk looks fine. Um, I just didn't do the best pour, but it sh the texture looks completely fine, so it should still taste really good, and I'm gonna, well, try some. And this is a cute little cortado. We definitely can see the milk foam is, is there, up top. Yep, that milk is nice and sweet because of the air we injected. It tastes really good. Uh, so yeah, you know, that was me making a drink on the La Pavoniera Piccola. And also, yeah, lever machines are super fun. I seriously recommend you pick one up either for experimentation. It's probably one of the cheapest ways to get into profiling of any sort of way. But I really, really like these machines because the, the experience of making the coffee is unlike any other machine. And it's just so satisfying to get it right. The other thing too is that if you become a master of this machine, these are skills that you can definitely carry over to other machines. You'll definitely understand pressure and flow a lot better with if you started out on one of these guys compared to anything else but for me i kind of went the other way i started on a decent i learned pressure and flow through that machine and i carried those skills over to here and well that's kind of why i'm able to get some really great shots out of this and frankly speaking these are probably some of the best shots i've ever had because i've decided to learn to let go i don't even look at the data i pull the shot i have fun and it's an awesome experience so thanks again for spending the time to watch the video. I love lever machines. We might get some more lever machines, but please let me know if you have any other questions. Feel free to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again.